All right, thank you for joining me again tonight. This is Sunday evening. Uh, we're heading towards the end of October 2022. And uh, interesting uh, video. Bear with me. I got some uh, interesting stuff. Uh, I got some help from Tom Klein, who's giving me some advice on some questions I had on as far as the dumb bit is concerned. Um, I literally spent the last two and a half days working on the hinge system improving the one I had originally put in which is an improvement over the AMT one in my opinion anyways um, but I had to improve on top of that once I saw photographs I'll show you guys the photographs I downloaded them what I'm talking about um, it's one of those things where you, I I literally fought you're building a one of a kind you're building your prototype your model that you're using that you're basing off of a prototype a real photograph a video or a real thing out somewhere on the road that you saw so um you start to not have that wiggle room or be as flexible as far as letting stuff slide and you try and it really becomes a battle and uh, i lost that battle <laughs> I went back, remember this truck was all assembled, it was all primered, ready to go. I took everything apart again. <laughs> um, just doing that was kind of a bit, little bit difficult, but the results were spectacular and I'll share them with you here and it's exactly what I was seeking, what I was shooting for. Um, and I pulled it off. But it was a lot of work and a lot of mistakes and a lot of trial and error, a lot of uh, experiments and just trying to think different things out. And I finally got it. Also, uh, let me see. Not too much we're going to talk about other than that. The dump it situation as far as where it sat in relationship to the cab. Well, I kind of have an idea, but I couldn't install the dump bit until I had the cab installed permanently so I can position the dump bed where it should be in relationship to the cab it was one of those things a chicken before the egg it was one that as silly as that may sound it literally that build was becoming that this is ready to go so let me see the dump bed my wheels stuck out too far My wheels literally stuck out um, too far. It was not the fault of the, of the white metal steering kit I bought. It has the correct length, scale length um, axle, the steering axle, uh, as opposed to the AMT one where it's actually uh, the steering axle sits too wide and you got to either cut it on the ends or cut out don't install the brakes there's different ways of attacking that problem i did not have that problem here this is the correct size the scale width for um 125th scale rigs however what i did and you guys saw in the last video i left these pegs out here sticking out a little bit too far it wouldn't let my tires sit all the way up against the let's say the disc brake there uh, although these things i think had drums um so we saw the fix i cut that off Let's start with that. Um, okay, okay. And do a little zoom. Okay. What I did, what I did is I did cut off those stems that set out way too far on that side. The wheel now sits nice and flush against this piece here. So I was literally just going to, let me show you, just back that up a little bit. I was gonna just literally flip it around, put some glue in the whole opening there, which I had widened a little bit to fit this larger size piece here. And I was just gonna mash them up and see how they came out. I didn't wanna do that because it seemed to me like it was gonna be a weak point as far as the steering axle was gonna be steerable. It's metal, it's got a lot of weight. And the whole time I'm gonna keep this rig up on my shelf, I'm gonna be turning the wheels left and right every week probably as long as I own it and it seemed like that weak glue 
connection point would just snap off if the conditions were right. So what I did is I went ahead and using, um, I don't believe this is quarter inch aluminum tubing. Speaking of aluminum, there's a real, 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 real neat, fascinating YouTube channel I stumbled across on here on uh, over the weekend of uh, small cars. Check out Small Cars YouTube channel when you guys get a chance. Uh, this guy who who his, he owns the channel, his name's Toby. Hello, Toby. Uh, I love your work. I'm fascinated by it. But what Toby does is he actually builds 125th or 124 scale rigs. He's building one right now. I believe it's a Mack truck. I could be wrong. He builds everything out of styrene from scratch. It's fascinating. Check it out. He makes it look like it's easy as pie. Uh, also, what I was watching a lot of YouTube because I was literally sitting on this workbench for about two and a half days of my weekend is uh, if you guys managed to see uh, David's from uh, Plastic Imagination's workshop, if you guys happen to see his Halloween, Halloween uh, premiere of his Freightliner, it came out great. I love the colors and it was something that I was not expecting and uh, I had a great time there. Uh, thank you, Dave, like always. Check out Dave's Plastic Imagination Workshop YouTube channel, along with um, Small Cars. Check out Toby's YouTube channel, Small Cars. Anyways, uh, Toby from uh, Small Cars builds with a lot of styrene. Mostly it's styrene, and he builds with a lot of metal. Well, we do the opposite here. We build with mostly the styrene from the kit, and we build with a lot of brass. Having said that, for some reason, this particular Freightliner dump truck kit has a lot of aluminum in it and regular galvan some sort of galvanized sheet metal throughout the model so i don't think there's a, there might be a couple pieces in here tiny pieces that are brass i think this uh this piece right here and probably the the frame inside and that's about it but um i went ahead and got a tube of aluminum i don't think it's quarter inch it may be or maybe slightly under i cut them about a quarter of an inch I made sure I drilled out the hole inside. To accommodate our tube. And I put it in there. I kind of press fit it. I made sure it was straight. I'm doing it freehand in the air for the camera right now. So I'm going to come back and make sure that's straight. But what you do then, because the opening... I'm going to speed this video along because I don't want to take up too much time, but but there's a lot of good stuff I'm covering. Well, we lost that one. Anyways, uh, there it is. What that allows me to do, because I, cho I chose the tubing that would slip over this axle part here, a nice snug fit. Now you can put maybe just a couple drops of whatever glue you use there. So instead of just gluing the, the end where it holds, but it could break off anytime, this fits. See that? It fits right over that, slips right on real good. And I did want to put this other one on because I want to show you one of the neat things about doing it this way is. I'm going to mount the front wheels on this uh, frame right now live for you guys on camera and I didn't use any glue. So like for mock-ups, checking clearances, measurements and stuff where you don't want to glue something, it tends to stay up by itself in the right position because of that aluminum sleeve uh, Covering the entire length of that uh, axle component that sticks out on each end there. So just something I came up with for just in case. And when I glue those pieces in, I'm going to be very confident that it's going to be a strong uh, connection. Um, okay. We're going to zoom in here real quick. Okay, let's do the camera. Let me zoom in real quick. We're gonna, I'm gonna use the laptop. I'm gonna show you guys some pictures. 
this is kind of interesting us it's gonna be a long goofy explanation but check it out because this is really 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 interesting what I stumbled upon oh crap mm, I'll find it give me a break give me a chance uh, give me a minute honey. okay Jesus has given us a I, uh, I, I stumbled across a video on YouTube and I liked it because it showed a close up of the front of um instead of just survive in these days of uncertainty he didn't give us this information so we could be afraid of the mystics or be overwhelmed by the world of evil for some reason my computer is not cooperating today No, I didn't really plan this thing out that well because I wanted to to shoot the video. Uh, files, my files, cameras, my files, download, new photo, camera, my files, recent. There we go. Shit, I still can't make it be all right. All right, we're just going to have to live with this uh, smaller photograph. I really wanted to. Oh, there we go. It might work. Okay. We're going to kill all the lights. I really want to show you guys something that I thought was fascinating on the freight liners, especially since I was looking to. Um, I'm sorry for that long pause, man. That was real unprofessional, but uh, I really, really, really want to show you guys this photograph. No big deal. It's a freight liner. We've seen a million of them all the time. But the hinge points on this guy here stick out very well. And they're brand new. So they got that gold anodized color. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to blow them up. And zoom. Well, you guys can see that right there, can't you? Yeah. You see that? So it's exactly like how I thought, I pretty much guesstimated off that other picture off of Landon Durant's Consolidated Freightliner that it's, um, it resembles kind of like a bushing on a car, the suspension, or the end of a shock absorber. It sits within these two uh, metal pieces here, and there's probably a rod going right through there, and there is actually a pin, or I won't say a bolt, but... And that's what allows your freight liner to tilt up and down. And there's the other one. So it's exactly like how I kind of guessed it was. It's a round portion here, sits within these two frames that attach these two pieces of metal or sheet that's not sheet metal two pieces of steel on each side it's probably shaped like a u and actually on the other photograph it was shaped like a u you can see it very clearly and it's attached to the end of the frame and that's what gives your freight liner the tilting ability lowering and raising the cab and now that i saw this photograph which was on friday night i had already finished I had already finished this guy right here. I went to bed Friday night thinking, good, I finished it. I'll shoot a video, and I was all proud of myself. Well, guess what, bud? It was, I was wrong. And once I saw that photograph, I was in bed all night long thinking about it, and I said, you know what? I came into the workshop. I tore out what I had done, so now I have an ex don't have an excuse to not, not go ahead and do it. And I went to bed, and first thing Saturday morning, I started working on that design there, and I actually pulled it off, guys. Uh, that's what I want to share with you guys today. Even though I mumble like crazy, uh, my intentions are good. But, um, okay. On my hinge system, I am going to take the wheels off for right now. Okay, on my hinge system, it's nothing fancy. It's just more reinforcement. For a more steady opening and closing of a cab. And just in case it gets bumped into. It's just a series of tubes and rods. In this case. 
I really have the aluminum tube. And this is the rod that's going to tie everything together. For right now, anyways, we're going to try and do a little quick mock-up and see if we can attach it. I literally just finished a little while ago. I haven't stuck a pin through there. I did check my clearances with my cab and everything works great. And I'm going to try and do that for you guys right now. I'm going to zoom the camera in nice and tight and show you what, I'm, what the hell I'm talking about. Okay. Using, now I'm looking through the view, viewfinder, so if I seem I'm not, if I seem like I'm not in focus or in the camera, it's because I'm literally looking through a viewfinder on a cell phone. But uh, here's a better angle. Using the pieces of that galvanized steel lacquer thinner can, which I still have plenty of, and you can see it there, you can see the blue writing and the beautiful finish on the outside. I went ahead and fashioned two of my own support brackets on the front of the frame, just like the what you see on the video or the photograph there. And there's that um, that uh, U-shape, and I did it to both sides. There's the other one. I should have used brass, but uh, I... I like the thinness of this because the ones on the photograph are pretty thin themselves. But this is not the photograph I'm copying. I'm copying the one off of Leo Durant. I'm sorry, Landon Durant's Freightliner. But this was excellent because it gave me a great close-up shot of what we're trying to do here. So there you go. I will give you guys a shot from up above. Nothing you see there, but you do see clearly the U-shape. See that? There you go. You can see it better right there. And on the bottom, nothing to see there. But what I did do is I went ahead and drilled out the holes. Where when I'm ready to attach the cab to the frame, you're going to, using the steel rod again, put it through right there. And it'll run all the way through to the other side. I'm going to pull it out right now for us, but uh, when I install it with the cab on, it runs all the way to the other side because that's how it attaches to the other side of the cab. Now both sides of your cab are fastened to the frame in a very, very sturdy, strong manner. Uh, you check it out. You do your measuring right now and you're leveling right now as you build it and you move it up. Because once it's done, if the cab sits a little lower on one side than the other, uh, you're not going to be able to take this apart anymore and do that. You're going to have to figure out probably shimming the wheels or the frame or something. But um, you don't want to mess with this. This is doing a lot besides just acting as something where a tube, a rod goes through there. It's doing about four or five different things at one time. And by you taking it apart, once you build it, you're not going to get that accuracy you fought so hard for as you were building it originally when you started um it just they never come out the same for whatever reason so you saw the two round pieces in the freightliner video now on my cab uh, let me see if i can keep that shot and put So there's that round piece right there, right there. Now for that, I did use brass tubing. These two little pieces here, if I measured correctly and did my, my um, Due diligence should fit, should slip right in these two openings. That will allow for that rod we just pushed through here originally about a minute ago. It will allow for the rod to go through the metal pieces we fabricated, the frame, this tubing, and those pieces on the cab that I just pointed out right now. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do that right now. 
Uh, let me set up the camera so we can get a good shot of that. Let's use this blue background. And if I screw up, well, we're going to find out right now. Um, <laughs> let's just do it back. All right. I'm trying to do this to the viewfinder. Let me back up just a little bit. I'll never get it. Okay. All right, let me get some light on that. They have to sit more. There you go, in the front like that. So they will stick out through that sheet metal of the Freightliner cab and... Um, through the bumpers and the grill work and all that stuff. And it'll look exactly like what you saw on the laptop photograph right now. Now, I I can't put a rod through there because I only have two hands. Uh, so I'll have to do that. And I don't want to mess it up. So I'll do that off camera. I'll show you guys the finished results probably tomorrow night. And um, it, look at that. It swivels perfect. There's no interference. And it just dropped... right down Whew. that's how it is on the inside Woohoo! I'm sweating man <laughs> wow oh man there you go I'll... Now I'm happy. Now I like it. Holy cow, man. Shoot, shoot, shoot. No more bad words. Shoot. I pulled it off, man. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I did. I said we weren't going to do... Uh... Yeah, let's do it all on one, on one thing. Um, Tom Klein, uh, Tom, thank Tom's helping me out as far as I did not know that on the rear of our dump bed where the tailgate is, uh, usually have chains back here on each end that they use for, you know, limiting the door travel and securing stuff, I guess, I imagine. My truck, I didn't ever notice any chains, but my truck's pretty beat up and the video is horrible as far as checking out detail. But Tom did uh, go out of his way and point it out. When I inquired, I answered his uh, little message there, and he went into detail, and I was blown away. I didn't know. So at work, I did my Google searches and researches and studied up. I had photographs, drawings, videos. Uh, even up until a little while ago, I was still looking at um, uh, the laptop on Google, on the photographs, the images. And the chains come in various configurations, the way they attach them, from either the dealer, the factory, or the the customer himself does his own well job and um, I do have all sorts of chain Tom and I'm gonna go ahead and use this stuff here um, on the video of our AMT I'm sorry the real Freightliner the prototype that's out there in Austin Texas well, what it is and I had originally thought wrong thank you Tom because had I built this thing the way I thought it was originally, and then I found out that I did it wrong once the model was complete, man, that would have messed up my day pretty good. So on our video, it only has one chain left. Keep in mind that truck has been beat to shit its entire life. And these two pothead kids that were having a good time with it, just beating her up some more. Everything's been ripped off that truck. Everything's been busted, bent, rusted. She's seen some hard years, so it only has one chain left, Tom, and it's still it's attached from up here. I went ahead and I put a little hook in there, if you can see that. And then what it is, they attach it here and it comes down and it just kind of free floats in the air down here. But the other end is wrapped around that hook and sticks down the other end side about this big. And you can barely see something swinging here in the videotape, but it's there. So that's what happened there. On this particular side, it's a little bit harder to see and it's harder to tell. 
I may have to just wind it up and take an educated guess, but I went ahead and put the little hook in there. And um, I'm going to look at those videos carefully and look for movements and shadows to see how we're going to attach this other one. But had the truck been new or newer or not as beat up, what Tom was pointing out is, uh, and there's different ways of installing, but generally it's from way up here and they come down here. Either they'll have a tubing or a tab that's loaded on or a piece of pipe it goes through or, or sometimes nothing at all. And it'll come up to about right here so it forms like a giant L. And it'll end about here. They'll either have a hook here for both to share in the center or each will have its own hook. Starting to remind me a lot of the uh, track changing cables on uh, Tiger Tanks. The ones that sit on top of the decks. Same thing. And um, that's what they use to secure the door or limit the travel of the door if they're going to be pouring gravel and stuff like that. And uh, Tom, that was a huge help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I could have never pulled that off without your help. Uh, there's an example, everyone, you new subscribers to my channel. Um, Toby from uh, Small Cars mentioned it. It's the sharing in this hobby. And uh, Tom just kind of saved me there. And uh, like always, he's just uh, willing to share his expertise, his knowledge, and his experience dealing with heavy equipment and big equipment all his life. And uh, he knows what he's talking about. And he saved my ass this today. But there you go. I'll work on that. I'll finish that up tomorrow. I'll shoot a video tomorrow. Be quick. Just of the finished work, what we did here. And then we can move on to other stuff. But um, thank you everyone for joining me once again. And we won't put any music here since I ran way too long yapping on the video. On my explanation. But we pulled it off. Ah, oh, hell. Let's see if we can play some music before the video cuts off. Uh, let's see here. No, no music. Just like that's fine. I'm having a blast um, coming up with ideas, concepts to see if they're going to work. Do them on paper first. Look at photographs. The best part of this whole hobby for me is the research. And I had a blast researching the Freightliners and what does that hinge actually look like. I even went on some um, big rig uh, actual suppliers of parts and stuff. And I saw many... Of those hinge systems for Peterbilt, and I forgot what other one for, but not for Freightliner. But those photographs right there kind of saved the day. So thank you for joining me, everybody. You new subscribers, thank you, thank you, thank you for signing on board. Uh, this is my wacky, crazy channel and my freaking long-winded mouthful of marbles explanations. But what I'm trying to do come across to you guys hopefully you guys pick that up if not comment below in the comment section uh, comments advice uh, critiques it's all welcome if you just want to bitch that's good too uh, and let me see what else we'll just leave it at that